O Lord, open our lips, and our, and our mouth, mouth shall proclaim your praise. O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised, out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained. What are mortals that you should be mindful of them? Mere humans that you should seek them out. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under their feet all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it, it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and shall be forever. forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. Psalm 119, verse 105 to 128. Your word is a lamp to guide me and a light for my path. I will keep my solemn promise to obey your just instructions. My sufferings, Lord, are terrible indeed. Keep me alive as you have promised. Accept my prayer of thanks, O Lord, and teach me your commands. I'm always ready to risk my life. I've not forgotten your law. The wicked lay a trap for me, but I have not disobeyed your commands. Your commandments are my eternal possession. They are the joy of my heart. I have decided to obey your laws until the day I die. I hate those who are not completely loyal to you, but I love your law. You are my defender and protector. I put my hope in your promise. Go away from me, you sinful people. I will obey the commands of my God. Give me strength as you promised and I shall live. Don't let me be disappointed in my hope. Hold me, and I will be safe, and I will always pay attention to your commands. You reject everyone who disobeys your laws. Their deceitful schemes are useless. You treat all the wicked like rubbish, and so I love your instructions. Because of you I am afraid. I'm filled with fear because of your judgments. I've done what is right and good. Don't abandon me to my enemies. Promise that you will help your servant. Don't let the arrogant oppress me. My eyes are tired from watching for your saving help, for the deliverance you promised. Treat me according to your constant love and teach me your commands. I am your servant. Give me understanding, so that I may know your teachings. Lord, it's time for you to act, because people are disobeying your law. I love your commands more than gold, more than the finest gold. And so I follow all your instructions. I hate all wrong ways. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and shall, shall be, be forever. forever. Amen. 2 Samuel chapter 6, 1 to 19 Once more David called together the best soldiers in Israel. 
a total of 30,000 men and led them to Bala in Judah in order to bring from there God's covenant box, bearing the name of the Lord Almighty, whose throne is above the winged creatures. They took it from Abinadab's home on the hill and placed it in a new cart. Uzzah and Ahio, sons of Abinadab, were guiding the cart, with Ahio walking in front. David and all the Israelites were dancing and singing with all their might to honour the Lord. They were playing harps, lyres, drums, rattles and cymbals. As they came to the threshing place of Nakon, the oxen stumbled and Uzzah reached out and took hold of the covenant box. At once the Lord God became angry with Uzzah and killed him because of his irreverence. Uzzah died there before the covenant box and so that place has been called Perez was a ever since. David was furious because the Lord had punished Uzzah in anger. Then David was afraid of the Lord and said, How can I take the covenant box with me now? So he decided not to take it with him to Jerusalem. Instead he turned off the road and took it to the house of Obed-Edom, a native of the city of Gath. It stayed there three months, and the Lord blessed Obed Eden and his family. King David heard that because of the covenant box, the Lord had blessed Obed Eden's family and all that he had. So he got the covenant box from Obed's house to take it to Jerusalem with great celebration. After the men carrying the covenant box had gone six steps, David had them stop while he offered the Lord a sacrifice of a bull and a fattened calf. David, wearing only a linen cloth around his waist, danced with all his might to honour the Lord. And so he and all the Israelites took the covenant box up to Jerusalem with shouts of joy and the sound of trumpets. As the box was being brought into the city, Michal, Saul's daughter, looked out of the window and saw King David dancing and jumping around in the sacred dance and she was disgusted with him. They bought the box and put it in its place in the tent that David had set up for it. And he offered sacrifices and fellowship offerings to the Lord. When he had finished offering the sacrifices, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord Almighty and distributed food to them all. He gave each man and woman in Israel a loaf of bread, a piece of roasted meat and some raisins. Then everybody went home. This is the Lord, word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Return, Return to, to the Lord, Lord who, who will have mercy. To our God, who will richly pardon. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Return to the Lord, who will have mercy to our God, who will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from above, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, Seed for sowing and bread to eat. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me fruitless. But it will accomplish what I, that which I purpose and succeed in the task I gave it. Glory, Glory to, to the Father and, and to the Son and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now and, and shall be forever. forever. Amen. Acts 7, verse 17 to 43. When the time drew near for God to keep the promise he had made to Abraham, the number of our people in Egypt had grown much larger. At last, a king who did not know about Joseph began to rule in Egypt. 
He tricked our ancestors and was cruel to them, forcing them to put their babies out of their homes so that they would die. It was at this time that Moses was born a very beautiful child. He was cared for at home for three months, and when he was put out of his home, the king's daughter adopted him and brought him up as her own son. He was taught all the wisdom of the Egyptians and became a great man in words and deeds. When Moses was 40 years old, he decided to find out how his fellow Israelites were being treated. He saw one of them being mistreated by an Egyptian, so he went to his help and took revenge on the Egyptian by killing him. He thought that his own people would understand that God was going to use him to set them free, but they did not understand. The next day he saw two Israelites fighting and he tried to make peace between them. Listen men, he said, you are fellow Israelites, why are you fighting like this? But the one who was mistreating the other pushed Moses aside. Who made you ruler and judge over us, he asked. Do you want to kill me just as you killed that Egyptian yesterday? When Moses heard this, he fled from Egypt and went to live in the land of Midian. There he had two sons. After forty years had passed, an angel appeared to Moses in the flames of a burning bush in the desert near Mount Sinai. Moses was amazed by what he saw and went near the bush to get a better look. But he heard the Lord's voice. I am the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Moses trembled with fear and dared not look. The Lord said to him, Take your sandals off, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. I have seen the cruel suffering of my people in Egypt. I have heard their groans and I have come down to set them free. Come now, I will send you to Egypt. Moses is the one who was rejected by the people of Israel. Who made you ruler and judge over us, they asked. He is the one whom God sent to rule the people and set them free with the help of the angel who appeared to him by the burning bush. He led the people out of Egypt, performing miracles and wonders in Egypt and at the Red Sea and for 40 years in the desert. Moses is the one who said to the people of Israel, God will send you a prophet just as he sent me and he will be one of your own people. He is the one who was with the people of Israel assembled in the desert. He was there when our ancestors, with our ancestors, and with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai, and he received God's living messages to pass on to us. But our ancestors refused to obey him. They pushed him aside and wished that they could go back to Egypt. So they said to Aaron, make us some gods who will lead us. We do not know what has happened to that man Moses who brought us out of Egypt. It was then that they made an idol in the shape of a bull, offered sacrifice to it and had a feast of honour of, in honour of what they themselves had made. So God turned away from them and gave them over to worship the stars of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets, the people of Israel. It was not to me that you slaughtered and sacrificed animals for forty years in the desert. It was the tent of the god Moloch that you carried, and the image of Rifan, your star god. They were idols that you had made to worship, and so I will send you into exile beyond Babylon. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterward receive me with glory. Lord, Lord, you you will will guide guide me with with your your counsel. counsel. And And afterwards, afterwards, receive receive me me with with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. And And afterwards, afterwards, receive receive me me with with glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, you will guide me with with your your counsel. And and afterwards, afterwards, receive receive me with with glory. glory. You show mercy to our ancestors. And and remember your your holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show us mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. 
This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, is now, and, and shall be forever. forever. Amen. You show mercy to our ancestors and remember your holy covenant. So another day, <clears throat> more opportunity, more challenge, more blessings. And as we give you thanks for this new day, Father God, we come before you with the things on our hearts and minds, with the people for whom we pray, for those for whom we contend, mm. for those with whom perhaps we struggle. And as we pray for those known to us and unknown, for places around the world and their turmoils, their troubles and their blessings, Father, we come to you and we thank you for your love. We come to you, Father, and we thank you for your mercy, for your grace and blessing. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father, we pray for the world at large we pray for the United States where electioneering and campaigning is underway and we will hear no doubt lots of speeches lots of rhetoric lots of promises Lord we pray that in the campaigning and in the election, the truth will be heard and will be seen. And that the vote will go the way you choose. Lord, we pray that your people would listen to your voice and follow your leading, whichever way that is. Lord, we pray that the election campaigns would reveal the true characters and the policies of the candidates. And the people would make an informed choice, not just one based on their entrenched ideals. Lord, this is an election that does have repercussions around the world. So we pray for its outcome. We pray also for the way that the electioneering takes place as there is already so much unrest in the US. And although statements have already been made which could incite some to riot or to protest. Lord, we pray that it will be peaceful, that it will be measured. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our, our prayer. prayer. Father, we live in a world this morning of rancour, bitterness, unrest and most of all father troubles troubles between authorities and the citizens 
trouble between law keepers and those they're there to protect. Mm. Father, as the tensions continue in Portland, as the tensions in Wisconsin get more tense, as a 29-year-old man who shot, now it says several times, may well be paralysed. The people in their response are not paralysed at all, but are active. And Lord, the tensions run high. Father, we pray for communities this day where tensions are to be found, where conflict and division are the rule of the day. Mm. And Father God, we pray that your peace will be found in every trouble spot of this world this day. Yes, Lord. That people might turn from their folly and look to unity, to love, and Lord, most of all, to your presence in their lives. Yes, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And Lord, while on one side of the Atlantic, protests are about law enforcement officers who misuse their power and authority. We pray for our own police force, especially as moves are made to bring in Harper's Law to protect members of the emergency services and to give longer sentences to those who attack them. Mm. Lord, as two of PC Harper's killers have appealed their sentences, but at the same time, a judge is reviewing their sentences as being too lenient. Lord, we pray for justice, not revenge. We pray for a clear message to those who disregard life. Lord, we pray for healing for PC Harper's family mm. and for all who have been affected by his death, for his colleagues, for those who knew him and those mm. who didn't, but those who go out day by day, for the police officers who have been attacked in Manchester trying to break up illegal raves and parties as that city was put back into lockdown. For those officers who are just trying to enforce the law, that they would do it justly and with patience and within the proper guidelines, not overstepping their authority, but that they would be protected in doing that, that there would be respect on both sides. So Lord, be with our law enforcement, be with our ambulance and emergency services, with our firefighters, with all who put themselves potentially in places of danger in order to make life better for the rest of us. Keep them safe and may they be may they be humble and just in their actions. Lord in your mercy hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Father we pray for those who regularly throughout the day and often at all times are on our hearts and minds. Father, we pray for those who we know need a touch from you at this time. For those we know who are struggling with the virus and Lord, 
while so many <clears throat> seem to regard the virus as no longer there anymore as they don't wear their masks and they gather in raves and impromptu discos as they don't wear the masks or walk with any distance considering all is done there are so many who are becoming more fearful more uncomfortable more distrustful of the situations and Lord today we pray for those who realize that this virus has not gone away and are fearful that it may come visiting them Father we pray for peace we pray for stability and constancy in their thoughts and their actions and their deeds that they would not be consumed by this virus and the fear of it but they would with confidence and common sense engage with each other in safe ways in places of safety mm. and father as the schools get nearer to going back we pray for the schools and their continued mm. planning for lord we need to bring our children back that is true we need to bring them back in a way that will keep them safe and their teachers safe so father we pray for our children and the plans the teachers make we pray for our teachers and the threats that they face yes lord lord in your mercy hear, hear our, our prayer, prayer. And Lord, as we pray for our children, we read that advice and research suggests that the education gap, which was closing between the more affluent and those who are less well off, is mm. not surprisingly broadening again. So once again, we have a society where those who have receive and those who have not are left without Father we pray for equality we pray for the balancing of that equation we pray that those who need the help would receive it we know it's difficult we know it takes lots of resources and lots of time. But Lord, we pray that as a country we would not disregard the needs of the less affluent just because they can't pay for it, just because it takes a bit more effort. Mm. Lord, we pray for government policy and the use of public resources to balance the equation to level up as we've been promised so that those who have less opportunities are given the opportunity to get closer to the opportunities of their wealthier counterparts we're not naive enough to think it will come to equality but Lord we we know that your heart is for the poor is for the dispossessed is for the vulnerable and those whose society would toss to one side so Father please intervene and help us to champion the cause to be willing to speak out to be willing to help where we can to put our own resources into helping those who are less fortunate
Father, we look for a day when the world will not be tilted in favour of those who have the money and the resources. For a day perhaps when the rich will turn and use those resources and share them. Not just look to feather their own nests or look after themselves, ourselves, because we are relatively rich in this world. <coughs> Lord, give us an attitude that is willing to share. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father, as if by magic, it's a bank holiday weekend and so the weather is billed as 15 to 17 degrees from Friday to Monday. Father it's so good to be back to British weather where a bank holiday comes and we will be freezing ourselves <laughs> and moaning. Father, I thank you that you know our needs in this nation and you give us the ability to moan so well. <laughs> so, Father, as we freeze this weekend, we ask that just as this will stop people gathering on the beaches, Lord, just as it helps us protect ourselves, so we will still find things to be blessed in this weekend, that we will still meet with our friends and family from a safe distance and that we will enjoy the things that matter. Lord, I thank you that you, in all that we do, will be with us. And Lord, so we pray that as we gather this weekend, as we come on a Sunday to break bread as we do tomorrow, that the church will see past the gloom and the cold and will be a body that brings your sun and your love and your light into the world around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father, as we pray for your church, we reflect upon the reading today. We pray that your church would always worship you mm. as you require. That we would be led by your spirit, be led by your law. That we wouldn't just please ourselves or do what we think is right in our own eyes. Yes but we would come before you, Lord, in humility and learn from you. Mm. Learn about who you are and what you require and how you require us to worship you and to love you and to live in this world as witnesses to you. We thank you, Lord, that you do bless your people. And we, we enjoy so many blessings, mm. being white, western, living in a stable country with many resources. We have so much to be thankful for. And in our thankfulness, may we never forget those who are our brothers and sisters around the world who don't enjoy the same circumstances and situations that we have. Those who are hungry, those who are without a home, those who are persecuted for their faith. Those who may lift their eyes and ask, where are you, Lord? Yeah. 
Father, may we never cease to pray for them. To identify ourselves with them. And Lord, we pray that right now that you would be the God of all provision. The God of all hope. The God of all comfort. Lord, reveal to us and inspire us to use what we have, not just to pray, but to practically, actively use our resources to help those who are part of your church, part of our family. Mm. And need some of what we have. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of glory, the end of our searching, help us to lay aside all that prevents us from seeking your kingdom and to give all that we have to gain the pearl beyond all price. Through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hallelujah. And how good to find out that the party bag was actually started by King David when you got a bit of bread, a bit of meat and a bag of raisins. <laughs> there you go. We thought we'd invented everything, but it seems there's nothing new under the sun at all. Have a great day, guys. Have a good day.